everyone and a very warm welcome back to the wildlife channel and today's video is all about painting this little baby elephant so without further ado let's roll that intro and let's see how we get on Everybody and a very warm welcome back now as I said just now I am going to be painting this beautiful little baby elephant for you this afternoon and it will be a time lapse because they do take time to paint and the full version of this can be found over on my patreon fully narrated all the brush strokes and all the the sort of ways and wherefores and how it came to be but I do hope for you who do not wish to sit through the whole lot to see this shortened version i hope you enjoy it i hope you get something from it so without further ado let's get on and let's see how it all turned out hey everybody let's crack on and let's look at doing this baby elephant from etosha now i've got most of it sketched out and done i've got a few areas here that i need to check and that is in there i think it's a little bit too sharp i'm just going to soften that a little more through there and then I want to put in here, there's the little bit of muscle there. And then that comes down here with that beautiful, just in there, I think there's just a little bit of a, a shape there. And that is a reflection, or not a reflection, a shady part. And then we've got certain muscle lines through here. Uh, traditionally we see these on most of our elephants. <laughs> First and foremost, I'm going to put in a bit of a wash over the whole thing. And I think what we've got is a very cool wash coming through. There's quite a bit of lovely colours in terms of warm colours, but I'm going to keep them um, isolated at the moment. I'm going to mix up a lot of lavender. But I say a lot of lavender, it's going to come down over the whole of the animal quite cool. But I'm going to avoid as much of the elephant as I can, and you'll see why very shortly. So the drawing is done, and just making sure there's no eraser on there, that's good. And a very watery, very cool colour going on over the animal here. Now I am, as I said, coming around the elephant as such. So this is where things like the bead, now when you talk about watercolor washes you often talk about something called a bead and the bead is where you have your painting set at an angle in this case between know, about 20 and 30 degrees something like that and you then paint your wash down and gravity will pull down the water and create little areas of bead so the lead edge of your wash will be uh, heavily weighted with water as such so you can work this down and allow the bead to come down I need to mix some more paint I'm going to do that very quickly now it probably will be slightly different mix but I'm not too worried about that I'm just going to come down here the reason I'm isolating the element is there's quite a bit of warmer color that I want to put in at some point in the future so I'm just going to paint this down in isolation Okay, once again that's probably not totally dry but enough to continue on with now with regards to this background I put this paint on a little thicker and you can see that it worked had that been 
wetter than the first wash many of these would have bloomed out and created cauliflowers and that is always the risk but by going in slightly heavier with paint to pig uh, to water ratio then I can get away with it and it's almost dry on the brush not too much coming off the brush so lots of these marks were almost dry brush marks but they work and I think we got away with that quite nicely enough certainly to have that beautiful cool and warm colors in our whole thing so the brush I'm using is uh, the first one I used was a number 14 round red dot and uh, as always I say if you want to get any rosemary's brushes or watercolor or anything just put my name in the affiliate link section Paul Apps Unbroken Capitals on checkout and that will help me uh, gain a little thank you from rosemary in relation to um, the transaction okay now what I want to do now is I want to mix a little bit of blue and a little bit of violet together so I want something that's almost between these two and I want a bit of light on our jumbo some of that off very very slightly into the main area of the ear I don't want to get too close to that that's still very wet and that will cause me no end of heartache coming down here with this shadowy area comes around and out to there down the side into this area like that and this is just subtle little changes to the overall tonal shift or value of our Annual. coming back with a little bit of that grungier color around here I've got to preserve all of the um, lights that are needed otherwise you're going to come unstuck it's going to look awful I'm going to come here all the way through there and the mouth part lower lip and then we're going to come up in here this is not so crucial because this is going to get a lot darker than I'm even allowing here. Need to keep an eye on that bit of light on the top tip of the prehensile part of the trunk. lovely bits of beautiful um, yellow colors these warmer colors so I'm, I'm just really ad-libbing I'm not actually looking too much at the reference to be fair I'm just simply applying some suggestion of denser something in the background just to give a little bit more body and structure that's going on behind now it may be that I come in this way I might even add a little bit of green in the form of some viridian into some of these gray colors so that we just a hint of something else going on
less of them. I think that's maybe burgeoning on a bit heavy. So let's just take the excess of that away. Let that settle down. Look at it. Let it grow on you. And then come back in if you feel the need to do more on that. All right. So let's return our attention to our lovely jumbo. The brushes I'm predominantly using are small brushes. So I've got these three, the rigger and the number five and the number four. Uh, pointed rounds and I've got this little fella here which is a really tiny little brush and I've used it before but it's a beautiful pointy little semi uh, rigger in a way it's a long thin brush but not quite the full length of a regular rigger but I'm now looking at the color and the overall look of our annual I want to get some darker aspects working before we come in with these really characteristic uh, wet spats where it's been throwing the water around and those darker aspects when we put them in will be the qualifying signifying contrast that this painting will need to set it up because all of this looks very very pale pastely lost and it doesn't make huge impact right now but when we get these darker values in then that will all of a sudden it will pop and it will do everything that you hoped that it would all right let's get on then so uh, my colors let's come in and look at some blue blue violets again touch a little bit of the uh, lavender a little bit of cobalt blue maybe even um, ultramarine blue really doesn't make it too much of a difference but I'm steering clear of these two reds and oranges in favor for maybe the burnt and the raw sienna Okay, so once again, I've used the hairdryer. It's not totally dry, but I think it's dry enough to continue with. So what I'm going to be doing now, I think, is starting to look at the uh, fire details on our baby Ellie. Certainly down here, we've got a lot more dark to put in. Certainly around here, we really need to punch up with the dark. So I think, really, I'm at the stage where this is done in terms of all the preliminary colors and subtle details now we've got to get really exciting with what we're doing and we're going to start punching in some of the heavier darks and now they are going to be mixed between the warm and the cool so we are going to come back in with almost the same colors but what we're actually going to be doing is making them so much more intensive so much darker and I don't really want to lose the beauty of color over just tone so I'm going to leave that like that I'm going to mix up another batch of that I'm going to come in more with that blue lots more blue and I'm going to come in with a little bit of the red so you can see that it is a bluer version of this in here uh, I'm going to come in with a bit more like that and if we want to make that bluer then we can just pop in with a little bit of the lavender just bring some of that to play in there so i think that's quite a nice between the two areas as it were okay so come and come in with this test it again just see where you are 
I think that could be even a little warmer. I think I need to make a little pile in here which is a lot more warmer. So I'm going to use the English light red, but I'm going to be using some of the uh, sepia, which is up in here. It may not be enough to do it because it's not a strong pigment. But we'll see how we go. I might even put a little neutral tint to that. That's quite a warm little value. Um, a little bit of red in the form of Indian red. We're going to see where that goes. So we've got to cool this off in here. I think this is quite nice and cool. But I want to look at this mark in here because I think it needs to be somewhat cooler right on the edge. Take that line around the ear, take that down and look at that. I think that works. Give that nice dark shadow against this area here. In fact, I think I would like to take that up to there. I don't think there's a big strong light there. I'm just going to break that out a little differently. I think that's where that line should be, looking at the picture. I'm just going to warm it up and I think we can get away with that. It's that little bit of light and dark there. That's what was confusing me. And I think here we need to come in with a lot of darks up in here. Around the bottom of the drawer, around that part of the ear. And it needs to get a bit darker yet, I think. That is quite dark under here so I'm just going to bring a few more of those lines across and they start to get darker and darker and sort of you don't see too much of them at this point like that just leave them alone and then whilst we're waiting just come in with some indigo some of our orange maybe that's too warm let's come back in with some indigo that's a very strong color going to tame that orange down with a bit of the red back in with the in uh, not indigo I keep saying indigo paints gray or it could be indigo as well it really doesn't make an awful lot of difference take the color check it out I think that's nice and strong but here I'm going to come in and I'm going to come in with this smaller brush for this what I want to do is come around here and shape up some of these marks that I put in the beginning and just look at that, leave that little bit of light there, it's gone a little bit high there, not a big worry, I can't do much with that. I'll come back down here now. Oh no. Big mistake. Alright. 
not concentrating. So I've got to clean this off. If I can. I'm working not trying to lose my cool. I just want to try and lift some of that off. Very, very hard. It made quite a large mark. And I don't think I'm going to get away with this one too easily. So let's come in with a stiffer bristle. This brush I use for lifting out on others. Lift carefully. I think I'm making the job worse. Let's see if we can recover this. Slightly better. Mm -hmm. It may be a big rock appears there. I'm not going to be beaten. Just trying to be a bit careful. Again, here I got a little bit out of shape. And try and lift some of that out there and get rid of that. problem is lifting out and then depositing paint you don't want there. I think we may have just got away with that thing. What I want to do now is come around here and suggest some of these sort of marks across the top of the head where we can start to bring this to a conclusion and come in with some of these dark areas here. These are just little touches of colour, just to mix up what you're seeing on the whole thing. Much as I like that as well, I think it needs cooling down ever so slightly, just a little too loud. It is in light, but it's just a little too loud there. So while all this is just setting itself up for the final bit, let's start looking at some of these forms and shapes that we can maybe add to in our background and foreground. So I've got a bit of a mess up there. I know I've got that mess up there, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. I keep looking at it. I don't think I want to do too much to it. However, I do want to put in the suggestion of some shadowy parts of stones. Quite cool nothing too heavy just suggesting that we've got little bits of information back up in here
right now that is fine do you want to enhance it more well let's go and do that let's just show you how we can do that come in with a smaller brush and all I'm going to do is I'm not going to touch it there actually I need to wait for that I just realized I need to come back in very quickly I want to establish a much stronger shadow of blue maybe some ultramarine blue got a little bit of red to it let's put a little bit of alizarin in there probably too much come back to the blue corrupt that down with a bit of yellowish brown in there let's just come in and just suggest our shadow from the animal I'm going to come in with a bit of cobalt to that, I think. So I'm going to sign it down the bottom, out the way. Okay everybody, one baby elephant completed. I had a lot of fun doing it and I'm sure you got something from the process as well. Even though it was a speeded up version, a shortened version, I hope you got something from it. But if you do want to see the full version, if you want to see all the colours used, the explanations, the brushes, everything about it if you want to see that then nip on over to my patreon it doesn't cost a lot to get involved but there is everything there that you need to paint alongside me and paint with me and complete your version of this baby elephant and also many other subjects because there are many full-length versions there for you to enjoy and get something from so take a trip on over if you enjoy it i'd love to welcome you on board as my latest patron that would be awesome now other than that, there are tons of things like my courses. The details for all of those are in the links underneath the Show More tab of this and many other videos. And you also get, if you go on over to my Patreon, you don't need to be a patron for this. You can download the uh, reference and the line art to do this painting. So if you just want to work from this short version, then by all means, pop on over there. You don't need to join it. Just download those references and have a bit of fun and learn. So it just remains for me to say thank you very much for joining me. I do hope that I will see you again in a future video very, very soon. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Have fun. All the best. Stay safe. Enjoy your painting. Bye-bye.